Today we're going to chat a bit about Knight Rider 2000. Now, I can hear you guys yelling into your screens what we're all thinking. Finally, you've been covering that garbage original series all this time when all we've ever wanted to hear about is this 1991 NBC made-for-TV movie. Well, little Billy and little Susie, today is your lucky day. In this video, you'll hear from an extra on the set and see his collection of never-before-published photos. Plus, he will take you on a journey of some of the filming locations now. So cue up your Yawn Hamor CD, because we are going to the not-so-distant future of 2000, as imagined in 1991, to meet the Night 4000 in Knight Rider 2000 in 2021. And oh dear, I seem to have gone cross-eyed. In the spring of 1991, Robert Ketterer had the fantastic opportunity to be an extra on the set of Knight Rider 2000, which filmed in the San Antonio area. Specifically, Robert was in two scenes. The first scene he was in was when Kit was coming down on the river. He was there the second time they filmed it. You see, the first time they tried it, the Knight 4000 boat actually sank. So anyways, as the car comes down the river, Robert is on the lookout platform on the middle, although you really can't see him too much. But as the car came down the river and people helped to stop it, he was there pointing like he was surprised to see such a thing. The rest of the interior shots were filmed on different days. The second scene he was in involved two locations. The first part of the day, the crew were at their local CBS affiliate, KENS-TV in San Antonio. It stood in for the Foundation for Law and Government, or the Knight Foundation as it's called in this movie. Robert even saved the call sheet from that day, as well as the shooting maps. They hung the Foundation logo over the CBS I logo. The shot he was in was an establishing crane shot. He is walking down the sidewalk with another guy as Kit passes him and pulls into the parking lot. The rest of the scene is when Devin gets dropped off and Officer Marla Hedges hits Devin over the head with her gun and knocks him out. So after that scene, the company moved to another location. Most of the day was them towing Kit and getting shots with David. After a while, they took a break. And this is where it all got pretty cool, says Robert. So in his words, there were about seven of us as extras. And David came out and talked to us. We talked with him for a good 45 minutes to an hour. People were asking all sorts of questions. This is where we found out that they were going to try and sell this movie as a TV series. We also found out that if it did in fact go to series, David would not be able to be in it because he was going to be bringing back another show that got canceled by NBC, Baywatch. He said he was gearing up for that right after this. We talked for a little while more before he was called back. The rest of us just hung out for the remainder of the day. We ended up not being used at all. After we were released from the day, I went to David and asked if I could get his autograph, which was a big no-no on the set, but he did anyways. He also told me to find his assistant because she had some promotional stuff. I went by, but it was just Baywatch postcards of him shirtless and in water up to his waist. I've said this then, and I say it to this day. David Hasselhoff is the nicest celebrity I've ever met. He didn't have to talk to us, but he did and he was interested in what we had to say. He didn't have to sign his autograph for me, but he did. He's a class act in my book. So during the times that Robert was not needed on the set, he was busy admiring the various vehicles used in the production, wisely documenting them with his camera. So let's take a look. Let's take a closer look at these behind the scenes photos that Robert shot back on set in April of 1991 in San Antonio. And thank you, Robert, for allowing us to share these with the Knight Rider community. So up first, 
we have the hero Chevy 57, 1957 uh, Chevy Bel Air hero car. They had a couple of these on set. Um, this was the nice one that they used for all of the exterior shots and whatnot. Uh, for those of you asking, no, we don't know what happened to this Chevy or any of the other Chevys that were used in the production. All right, moving ahead, another angle. You can see that uh, they're all parked in this gated lot here. We kind of see the side angle of the Chevy there. Um, it was boxed in by another vehicle here, which I think we'll see shortly. There we go. So we zoom out a little bit and we can see one of the police cars, the Chevy Beretta police cars, is parked nose to nose with the Hero 57 Chevy. And we can also see the corner of a Knight 4000. They had two running driving Knight 4000 vehicles. They also had a boat car used for the, the scenes where uh, Kit is driving on the uh, river walk. And they also had an insert car, which was just a half car, which we'll get to in a few minutes. We can tell because the windshield is clear here, we can tell this is the Hero Knight 4000, not the stunt version. All right, moving ahead. So here's a picture of one of the other 57 Chevys, obviously. I believe this is the one that went off the uh, pier and into the ocean. Just judging by the damage on the front and the, the crustiness of it, I think this is the one that probably went off the pier and then later appeared um, in the Knight Foundation's warehouse. Um, all crusty and I believe Sean was pulling some seaweed out of it. We can see based on the A pillars here that this was originally a red Chevy. Uh, looks like red with white top would be my guess. All right, continuing on. So this is a young Robert um, getting his picture taken. We're back with the Hero 57 Chevy here and the Hero Knight 4000 here. And then we move ahead and um, we see the, the 57 Chevy. This is still the Hero car. And if you look, it's, it's, taken, it's still in that same lot. It's taken from the other angle. Here's that, the front of that uh, Chevy Beretta police car. And if you look through the window of the Chevy, you can see the profile of the Knight 4000 Hero. So we know this was all taken at the same time. There's another um, Beretta police car back here. There's the Chevy Lumina van police car here. Two of them, it looks like, and some other police cars there. Don't know what's going on here. It looks like there was some repair work done to the front fender of the Chevy. And here is the Knight 4000 Hero car. Again, we can tell because it has the clear windows from the outside. Um, for those of you familiar with these cars, this is the one that was recently for sale and um, is, is on its way to being restored. Um, but we can see the Hero 57 Chevy parked beside it. Another angle, also the Hero Knight 4000 car. And one more angle, kind of a profile shot or, or a, a lower uh, shot to show the side of the 4000. So then we turn here, and this is still the Hero Knight 4000. We can see the, the Chevy Hero here and that uh, police car right there. But you get a nice side shot of the, of the 4000. And uh, taken through a chain link fence, as you can tell, but this is the back of the Hero Knight 4000. And another shot. And another shot. Robert did an excellent job of getting all the different angles of these vehicles, which is really cool. And one more. I believe this Penske truck was probably a, a rental or, or used for the crew for the production down in San Antonio. And one more. And then we have this great shot of Robert um, now with the Knight 4000. So he probably took the picture over here with the Chevy and then moved over with the 4000 and got this really cool shot with that car. So he took this great shot of the inside of the Knight 4000 Hero car. And, you know, when you watch the movie, there's not too many shots of the uh, dashboard. But when you see the shots of the dashboard with the working lights and the TV and all that stuff, that was all done on the insert car, which we'll get to here in a minute. Really, the Hero car just looked like this. It had this uh, fiberglass dummy uh, shell inside and 
you know, it was definitely, it was not finished in any way because they were never going to be showing the inside of this car. So we can see that the airbag's been removed from the Dodge Stealth and looks like we're missing a shifter plate down here. We can see the studio keys with the key tag here. So pretty neat, uh, rare shot of the inside during filming. And um, again, we know this is the hero car because uh, see the seat here, see how it has fabric, this uh, uh, pattern fabric. The stunt car actually had gray leather seats while the hero car had this uh, fabric. So that's another way to tell the difference between the two. All right, so now we move. This is the boat car. This was only used in the scene where Kit was driving on the, or was floating on the uh, river walk. So there's a fantastic story, which um, we talked about earlier uh, with Robert's recollections about the first time that they filmed this, the car actually sank in the river walk, so they had to go back and do it again. But this is the boat car. This car still exists, by the way. This is uh, down currently at the Deezer, um, the, the Deezerland Museum in Orlando, Florida. It's on display there. There's a side view of it. It's really neat because it's just the shell of the 4000 with a boat motor out the back and these are fiberglass wheels that are made to look like the original wheels. There's another look. Looks like it's got some handprints on it there. All right, now we're back. This is the 4000 Hero car. We're back in the uh, caged lot here. And then this is a close-up of the Chevy Lumina police vans. Robert thought it was neat to have the barcode license plates, which you kind of see in the movie, but you never see them up close. So this is what they look like up close. And I believe the movie is supposed to take place in Seattle, isn't it? But um, we've got here, it looks like almost like a, the Texas star, right? Um, so, you know, it was filmed in Texas and these plates were probably made in Texas. So maybe that was put on there just as a inside joke. I don't know. And then there's the fantastic scene where the, uh, I think it's a Dodge, is it a Dodge Daytona that gets blown up? And I always liked it because you could tell that the car was going to get blown up because it was an older model. It wasn't a then new Chevy uh, Beretta that they were using for all the other cars, but they used this much older um, Dodge Daytona. But here's the aftermath uh, with the roof all blown up and the whole back end just scorched. And then the further, you know, back uh, zoomed out shot of the Chevy Lumina police van. And we've got the Beretta, one of the Berettas over here. And this is neat. This is two of the insert cars. So they had an insert Chevy, which you can see here was just like a half car. And then they had the insert Knight 4000 here, which was again, just a half car. You know, there was no, nothing behind the B pillar there. Um, let's see if there's a better shot. Yeah, there we go. The insert 4000. We actually own this, this uh, insert car, the 4000 insert car. So maybe we'll do a video on that in the future, but we own this one. Don't know where the insert 57 Chevy went. Another view there. And that's uh, the end of his picture. It's a pretty neat uh, glimpse into the behind the scenes of Knight Rider 2000. A few years ago, Robert went back to some of the filming locations he was at in 1991 and filmed this video, which he graciously allowed us to use here. Okay, so you're asking yourself, why are we at the Century Building? The reason why we're here is because this was a filming location used for the TV movie Knight Rider 2000. Here it is, the Century Building. Back then, the windows were gold. They have since replaced them. In the movie, David Hasselhoff and his co-star come out of this entrance right here, and they walk along here to where the 57 Chevy was parked. It was parked in this spot right here, I believe. And you know because those flagpoles right there were in the background of the shot. Now, I was not in this particular scene, but I was an extra in a few of the scenes in the movie. 
the Quainton State Prison sign was located right about there. Now there was another scene used at the end of the movie which involved the 57 Chevy and the Dodge Stealth that they used for Kit. They were both parked right over here. Now David Hasselhoff aka Michael Knight uh, drove away in his Chevy back into retirement and the Dodge Stealth was parked right about here. The two co-stars were arguing right here about who was going to drive. Kit said Neither of you are going to drive. I am. And he took off down here. And as he did that, he did a little donut facing this way and said, are you two coming? There was a foundation for law and government sign where that Ken's TV is right now. Um, there was a round insignia over there on uh, that. This is where the magic happened, right here. I was walking on that sidewalk right there and the Dodge Stealth came right down the road here and stopped right here at the end, right about there. That's when Devin Miles got out of the car and started walking in the parking lot and got hit in the head by one of the officers. And then this is actually uh, the lead up to his uh, death right here at the Foundation for Law and Government. We're now Ken's TV. Well, it's been Ken's TV for a long time, and believe it or not, I used to actually work here a long, long, long time ago. David Hasselhoff was not in this scene, but Edward Mohair was. I didn't get to meet him because he was off somewhere, and uh, eh, oh well, uh, the memories. All right, we're here at another location for Knight Rider 2000. We are at River Center Mall. And right out here is where the car with the bad guy and all the cops pulled up and stopped right there at the bridge. bad guy and the cops got out on this side right here on the street and did a little dialogue before going to the River Center Mall. And Kit, the Dodge Stealth, came down the river and went this way. came right down that river there and he stopped right on the side just a little bit shy of the uh, end here. It was probably about right there where he stopped. Interestingly enough, they had to shoot this scene twice. The car that they used, which was really a boat, and they had the car body on the boat, sank the first time, so they had to do it a few weeks later. I was actually in the scene, and I was on the bridge over here the second time. 
I was on that bridge right there, but you really can't see me at all. We're here at the Food Court River Center Mall. This is where Michael Knight came in the doors with his partner to confront the bad guys. This is where the bad guy, played by Mitch Pileggi and the dirty female cop, they came down the escalator here and they ended up in the food court. Now with general renovations and remodeling and stores leaving the mall and new stores being added, this is where they had the fight scene. There was a Banana Republic in the background, but Banana Republic is no more. But this is where uh, Mitch Pileggi and David Hasselhoff had their fight at the end of the movie. I believe David Hasselhoff's co-star was Susan Norman. And she was standing right about there where that kiosk is. And the bad guy, like I said, played by Mitch Pileggi, was standing somewhere in this area right here. And he was saying, yo, you're just going to have to arrest me. And as he was looking like he was going to give up, he grabbed his gun to shoot her. Well, David Hasselhoff, Michael Knight, who was laying down here, grabbed a gun that was on the ground and shot Mitch Pileggi and he fell over the railing and his dead body was on that escalator here going up. And that's where David Hasselhoff said, you're off duty, pal. When I went to the management office to see where the Banana Republic used to be, the lady in there said, oh, you're not supposed to film in here without permission. She goes, security hasn't stopped you? I was like, no, I've been filming in here for a good 45 minutes already getting the locations. And she was like, well, I didn't hear or see nothing. So she said, do it at your own risk. So I got all my shots here and we're off to the next location. The Tower of the Americas. During the beginning of the film, the bad guy goes to the restaurant at the top of the tower and takes one of the city officials hostage. He comes down and one of the police officers who came down earlier sees this and tries to shoot him with her stun gun. He drops his gun and she picks it up, thus moving the plot forward of the movie. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little um, sidebar. Uh, you know, we've been talking pretty much specifically and solely about the original series. So I hope you enjoyed this little sidebar on Knight Rider 2000. We do have some additional stories and, and behind the scenes uh, video and photos on this uh, made for TV movie. So if that's something you guys are interested in, do you want more Knight Rider 2000 on this channel? If you do, let us know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time. And now, while we listen to Joe's selection of Knight Rider music that we received directly from Don Peak himself, we'd like to thank these Patreon supporters. Look at you guys scrolling up the screen to my right. Wait a minute, how can you tell which side is my right since you can't see me because I'm not on camera? Oh well, you know what I mean. We're featuring these fine supporters at our Knight Rider prop restorer level. Thank you very much for your support. And for those of you at the Knight Rider History Hunter level, we're recognizing you right now in the description. Now, if you enjoyed seeing this golden nugget of Knight Rider history being rescued from obscurity, then please consider supporting us on Patreon. 
Your support would empower us to bring you even more of these historical nuggets. We are the Knight Rider Historians. Till next time, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.